Hey guys, welcome to December 15th DVD update. Where I show you all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last three weeks. Now before I show the DVDs and Blu-rays, I want to let you all guys know that you have the opportunity to be part of the upcoming television show, Look. As you know, last summer I had a part in the show, and there's going to be a scene in the show where I introduce a clip that I filmed of these two girls having a huge fight, throwing each other to the ground inside of a fast food joint, like a Burger King kind of place. Throwing each other down on the ground, beating each other up. And basically, you guys can, underneath of this video, submit, after you watch the update, send a video of yourself, like you're watching what this video of the fight. So you're like, you're like, ooh, you're watching these two girls beating each other up, so just have reactions like this, like this, shocked, you can say whatever you want, anything like that. And Adam Murphy will see these videos and pick the best reactions and put them as part of the show. So that technically I'm going to be introducing a clip and people that actually watch my videos will be watching this video. So it will be a cool thing all around. And I figured this is the best video to tell you about it since most people who watch this would probably be interested in doing that. So anyway, now on to the video and look forward to seeing what videos you post and put them underneath of this video and do it in the next few days or or week or so whenever you get a chance. Now the first DVD I got, and I got more DVD Blu-rays this week than DVDs, and there's a couple of titles, it's not the biggest update because there's a couple things I really wanted to show, but I didn't have time to get through all of them. So there may be another update in like two weeks or a little sooner than normal. We'll see if everything goes well. The first DVD I got is a Kurt Angle movie. They can't, that Kurt Angle's been now starting to get into horror acting. And a lot of wrestlers go into horror films like what, either when they're stopping wrestling, things like that. And this thing, that I only got this because Sam Nicotero, who was in 1224 with me, we were both in that film, and he had a big thing in that. And I, I just talked to him one day when we were behind the scenes, like, mo like in the van with him for hours while he was smoking cigars. He was a really cool guy. But he's in this movie for maybe like five minutes called Endgame. It's basically Kurt Angle as this crazy serial killer that is just like, killing people and he's on the hunt and the only problem with this movie was some of the acting in this a lot of the acting in this was really really bad and not like to the point where it was like you know like bad fun it was kind of bad funny it kind of had that kind of reminded me of the 555 act if anyone's seen that film it was a little like that some of this acting Kurt Angle did good though Kurt Angle I thought has potential for doing a lot of these, I think. There's some scenes of him, like when he got in disguises and he was on the run from the cops. He wasn't bad, but some of the actors in this were not the greatest. And the thing is, the movie, though, the movie, I kind of liked it, though. It had really nice, stylish lighting. And the shots were really good. Like, it had good cinematography. It's worth checking out. It has. It, I've seen it at Blockbuster. I've seen, I don't really rent, but sometimes I go to Blockbuster and see what weird horror movies have come out. Because they always get weird stuff you don't see in stores. But this is definitely worth checking out and get it on like Netflix and things like that. The next one I got, I watch this sometimes when it's on TV. And this is like, I think it's like all, I think they've been doing this show since like the 80s or early 90s. This is basically like the unseen stuff edited it into episodes. It's lock up raw and it basically follows people around at jail. It's like films them in jail and all these issues they go through and what jail life is like. It's an interesting show. And this one has a lot of older clips from things and uncensored things. This is definitely worth checking out. The next one I got, I haven't even been able to watch the whole thing, only a few clips of it. But because the first um, pressing, which I have, has major sound issues. Like the sound. Half the time the sound gets turned down, like the volume of the speaking. There's, I think it was something in the mixing, the director told me. There was a terrible problem, so you can't hear them, like the actors half the time. Then half the time the sound effects are all the way up, the actors' volumes are all the way down, then the actors' volumes are all the way up. So this is the old DVD. The new one, which is out now, is fixed. And it's coming to Blu-ray in a couple months, so I'm going to wait and watch it again when it comes to Blu-ray. But it's Blood Moon Rising, and Ron Jeremy has an appearance in this as well. Um... From what I saw, about 30 minutes of it, I really liked it, but I, I can't judge it since I haven't been able to see the whole thing. Now, the next one I got, and these I've been waiting for these to come out for a long time, because um, I really like the fifth one. And I, I know there's not really even a Santa Claus killer in these, but they use Santa Claus on the cover, and it's Silent Night, Deadly Night. And a lot of people saw this picture I posted on what DVDs I got. Uh, at Best Buy and people thought this was the original one. No, it's the first, it's the second, no, it's the third, the fourth, and the fifth. The first two were originally released together in a set, and these are the other 
other three ones. I don't think there are any more sequels, but I'm not sure. The fifth one, though, was my favorite of these. There's Mickey Rooney as this crazy toy maker, and I don't remember every detail about it, but I believe he like made this son that went crazy and started killing everybody. And the, se the, th the fourth one I still have to see. The third one was not too good. And the thing that these movies like to do is they like to reuse old footage from the first movie. Like the second movie basically was all, at least 50% of the movie was all footage from the first movie. And they changed the music and they like kind of like turned out, take, took out all the dialogue. It was very peculiar. And then the second one, I mean the third one, they did that a bit too by taking parts from the th first movie and changing it around. And Bill Mosley was the killer in, in this. He, he woke up from a coma and was after this girl who was blind. It was interesting, but kind of boring. Now this one I got from Cheesy Flex, and I saw the trailer for it on um, the Uninvited DVD. Not the Uninvited, the new one. The old Uninvited with Clue Gulliger and a bunch of people. This is called Fan of the Dead. And the trailer to it made it look cooler than it was. Basically, this is a kid who came over from France and he basically filmed home video footage. It's basically his home movies that that they're selling for the most part. And he edited them together, kind of. And it's basically like day one, day two, day three. Day one he went to a horror convention and a lot of the actors from Dawn of the Dead were there. Dawn Day and Night of the Living Dead. And then he went on the mall tour of the Dawn of the Dead mall, which was funny was it was an alternate perspective of the same tour, which is on one of the Dawn of the Dead DVDs and the features. Um, and then it has like some behind the scenes of the location. So they go to where they filmed Dawn of the Dead. They go in, through the mall. They go to the old and Day of the Dead in that um, underground place where they filmed the whole movie, which is now used for like storage. And I mean, it's, it's interesting, but it's not the greatest thing ever. Now for the Blu-rays I got, the first Blu-ray I got is the Mel Streep Amy Adams film, Julie and Julia. Now, I wasn't sure how this was going to be at first, but I kept hearing everybody go, this is great, this is great, it's excellent, you got to see it, superb, and it really was good. It basically, it's about um, Amy Adams' character, it basically cuts back and forth between the times. Amy Adams' character is like working this job as a phone operator, like a grief counselor, I believe, something like that. And her job is terrible, she doesn't enjoy it. So she decides to start this blog where she cooks her way through the entire Julia Child's cookbook every day and she blogs about it and, you know, all the problems she has with cooking the dishes. Then it cuts back to the 1940s when Julia Child's character, played by Mel Streep, is in France with her husband. And you find out, too, it's, I didn't know, Julia Childs wasn't even French, and she was just sort of putting on that, Oh, Julia Childs accent! And that wasn't really even real. That was just, like, an accent she put on. But it's her in there, and then it's her trying to write the cookbook. So it cuts from her trying to put the recipes together in the cookbook to Amy Adams cooking them. I'm not explaining it as good as I could. It's actually very good. I really like that this is definitely one to check out. The next one I got is Mike Judd's film, which I think I think it did pretty well for him because I know Office Space didn't do too well and it I think he was mad about it for years because it was such a bomb at the box office but then it became a huge hit on DVD and then the, the other one he did in human something like that the, I never remember the title to it that did terrible and then it did a bit better on DVD but this one I think did okay and it's extract it's basically um Jason Bateman's character who works at this, he's like the boss of this extract factory where they make vanilla extract and all these different types of extract. And the, there's one work-related injury and this one guy loses his tes testicles. And then Mila Kunis just comes over there to try and get money out of him and just like swindle the system. It's a very funny movie though. I, I, I really like this and it has features on this as um, exclusive to Blu-ray and they're doing that a lot now. I really think lately Blu-ray is becoming the main format because when you go to Best Buy I mean the, the section of Blu-ray now has is bigger compared to the entire section of all the DVDs that includes the TVs everything so I, you can really tell that Blu-ray is taking over now so they're putting exclusive things and um, some DVDs don't like the regular DVDs don't have any features at all and they're even now taking the prices down to the point where if you want the special edition DVD it's gonna be 22 the regular Blu-ray with all the features is 19 and this movie's definitely one to check out. I thought it was very funny. It's very similar to Office Space, that the, all those kind of similar characters and incidents and whatnot. It's good, though. Now, at um, Walmart, they have a sale 
I think these were like nine dollars each and it's the original Cujo on Blu-ray which if you haven't seen that it's D. Wallace Stone I think now she just says D. Wallace or something like that she doesn't use the full name but it was her and if you haven't seen this it's Stephen King based on a Stephen King book and it's um this crazy killer dog and I haven't seen this in years I remember the old DVD but the original DVD I got originally there were some of these DVDs like Children of the Corn Cujo which for some reason were censored so every time there was a bad word it would edit it over the bad word it would cut out the violence very strange it was like the only versions that were out for a long time but this one was about this kid and his mother and they end up in this stuck in their car because there's this crazy killer dog it's kind of it's basically like the Beethoven dog I believe it's like attacking them and they can't leave or they get killed the dog is crazy and the next one I got is my buddy Valentine which is the original film which the the remake is slightly based off of this one was more about a company party and this I thought this one was a lot cooler and the next one I got I saw this one on demand it was one, one of those things where you can see a movie on demand before it comes out Oh, like why it's out in theaters before it comes to DVD. And it's the Robin Williams movie directed by Bobcat Goldwith. Wait. And Bobcat, if you don't know, was from, like from the Police Academy movies and he, had, and he always did that funny voice. He was like, I can't even do it. But very strange voice. I always loved his character. He was also in, um, what else was he in? He was in a couple episode of Freddy the Dark as the Sandman and a couple things. I, I really liked him. And hopefully at some point he comes back and does that voice too in something. But, um, this is one of the... He's directed a couple things. He was also in Shakes the Clown. In this movie, though, it's, in my opinion, it's Ron Williams' best film in years. And I think it was one of my favorite films of the entire year. And it's World's Greatest Dad. And it's basically Robin Williams. He has this son. He's a teacher at a... I think he's a substitute teacher? or No, he's a English teacher or a literature teacher. And the class is not very popular. No one's joining it. I think it's a poetry, maybe. I don't, I don't remember exactly what kind of teacher he is, but his son is a screw-up, and he doesn't really care, and all he cares about is, like, pornography, and he's real deviant. And um, I don't want to get into all the details. Let's just say the son dies. And um, and you can't give too much... You don't want to give too much away about this, but all you know is the son dies, and Robin Williams kind of changes the details of how he dies. And you know, this is one of those movies where I can't say enough that this is something you have got to see. And don't think that's going to, like, don't think, oh, Ron Williams has done stuff like Harvey and all that, and old dogs as of lately, and I'm not going to watch this. This is not anything like that. This is Ron Williams at top form. This is Ron Williams, Mrs. Doubtfire quality. It is mu a must see. It's World's Greatest Dad. The next one I got. And this was on sale for nine dollars at um, Best Buy. And it's Donnie Darko and has the um, director's cut and the the original cut. And the director's cut of this, I don't care for it. They changed a lot of the music and the pacing is different. But I would stick with the original. But if you haven't seen it though, it's this kid that is like seeing this like rabbit creature, and it's very difficult to explain, but a good movie. The next one I got is. Um, the Judd Apatow's latest film, Funny People, and this is with Adam Sandler, and he's this comic that thinks he's believes he has cancer and he's going to die, and um, so he wants to. He's like an actor, and he and he was a comic, and he wants to get back to doing stand-up comedy. So he hires Seth Rogen's character, who's a stand-up comedian that he's seen perform a couple times that he liked. So he has him help him write him jokes. Then he basically has him become his assistant. And he pretty much like talks to him at night, helps him go to bed. Because Ron Williams becomes a mess in this. The thing I don't like about it is how the trailer reveals that Ron Williams gets better from this. And you don't find that out until like, like half, more than halfway through the film. But this is definitely... I, I feel like the Judd Apatow films have been getting much more grown up, and they're not as silly, and uh, I don't know. I think they're, this is one of my favorite ones that he's done. The next one I got, I didn't love this movie, but I thought it was good, and it was like $17. I thought, I don't know, I enjoyed it, and it's, and I like a lot of these Christmas movies, and it's Four Christmases, Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon, and I think it's, um, originally Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon, and, Reese Witherspoon's character are planning on going away because they don't like seeing their families at Christmas. But then the airport gets totally snowed in and they can't leave. And by some chance, all their family members see the news. Like, what's the chance of that happening? But um, so then they end up 
having to see all their families in one day, one family after another, and then all these issues come through it. A lot of the slapstick stuff, I don't, it's not bad. The next one, I still have, haven't watched the, the new cut of this, but it's Terminator Salvation. It's like, we have to fight! And this, you know, I, I don't care too much, truthfully, for, um, you know, Christian Bale. I mean, Christian Bale has been good in some movies, like Machinist, and but like when he does that sort of like tough guy thing, like he does in this, I think the Sam Worthington was a far better actor in this. And you know, when you see the thing, the way Christian Bale was treating that guy too, it's like hard to watch this. But um, you know, I thought this was a decent Terminator movie. I ha this one includes the R-rated cut of the movie, which it originally was rated R, then cut down to PG-13 for the theaters. So at least this has the uncut version of the movie. So I still have to watch this version. But I did like this. Now, the last one I got, and like I said, I didn't show as much in this one. I, over there I've got like six or seven more that I wanted to watch for this update. But, you know, things got delayed. And I didn't get to everything. Because, you know, when you have a job and stuff, you don't have all the free time in the world just to watch things one after another. But the last one I've got, and like I said, the next update, hopefully will be two weeks. Because if it isn't, it'll end up being four. And I don't want that to happen. Because I'm doing a movie during the period of December, the end of December. So that'll screw things up. But the next, the last one I got is um, Ben Stirl and Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian. Which is the second Night at the Museum film. And this, I thought, all around was very weak. Well, this one, I did not care too much for this one. The first night of the museum, I really liked that one. And it had the character, the idea of Ben Stiller getting this job at this museum that at night everything would come to life. And he had all these rules that he had to follow and all these things he had to do. Otherwise, these animals, would, things that came alive would cause all these issues in the museum. And it had the, the comedic characters, which were Mickey Rooney and the other two. I always forget their name, but they, those three characters with the three old men who were the original security guards that had to retire because they were too old for it. And that stuff I really like, but this, this new one starts off with Ben Stiller's character. He's rich because he's invented all these weird things. It reminded me a little bit of him and Envy. It's like when he had that um, um, infomercial thing and Envy, like where'd the, where'd the sheet go? But this one, it's more, more this movie is more like, who funded this sheet? This thing though was not fun. I mean, you know, I'm sure some people have liked this thing, but I'm sorry, this movie sucked. You know what I mean? I'm just going to admit it. I did not like this. People say I, know, I never, I, this, I don't ever not like something. I didn't like this very much. It had that real stereotypical bad sequel quality to it. And also, half this movie was improvised, and a lot of these improvised scenes went on and on to these boring levels with the... And the worst is when you improvise a scene with a bad, stupid joke that just keeps going and isn't very funny. I mean, you know, the movie has some okay things about it that I liked, but all in all, it's not a fun movie. Owen Wilson was really half-assing it in this. He was just like, hey, cowboy. He, like, he could really give a sheet, you could tell. It was just like, hey, cowboy, how are you doing? I don't know, I did like seeing the behind-the-scenes documentary on A Day in the Life with the director. The director's done a lot of stuff I've liked. It's just this thing, it's just the script was weak, and it was a lot of that improvising stuff, which I did not care for. You know, I love improvising and Kirby Enthusiasm, but when you have to hold back and it has to be PG, and you have to stick with stupid jokes, it doesn't work. And this movie is, I, I don't know, I, I did not like it. Well, guys... Thanks again for watching, and look forward to seeing the videos you submit under this. And basically, if you, like, it's basically just you, like, you're, act like you're watching a video of these two girls beating each other up in a fast food joint. Thanks again for watching, and see you guys soon.